Good. Okay, well, first I want to thank you all for your patience. It's, uh, it's been a goal of ours in Baltimore to keep the media informed about critical events that affect our community. Uh, rarely do we keep the media informed about one of your, one of your homes. So we want to again thank Fox 45 for, for their proactive efforts to really help us evacuate that building. That saved us a whole lot of time. Uh, you guys are, be, are to be commended for your, your active role in, in this effort. So I'm going to turn it over to Director T.J. Smith. As we said earlier, uh, we, we've learned several things since we briefed you last. Chances are we'll probably brief again tomorrow as we continue to learn more things about this suspect. So just bear with us as we make our way through this information, but it's important, uh, obviously I'm preaching to the choir, to get you information timely uh, yet accurate. So that's what, uh, that's what we want to be, timely and accurate. So I'll turn it over to Director Smith and then we'll take some questions. All right, Director T.J. Smith, uh, Media Relations Director for the Baltimore Police Department. All right, let's go back to the beginning. About 1.20, we got a call here at Fox 45 here on 41st Avenue. Uh, this is in the uh, 41st Street. This is in the area where multiple uh, television stations are. This is on the main road facing uh, 41st Street. Uh, 1.20, it was about a person in the lobby uh, with some type of device. We also had a call for a car fire out in front of the location. We were quickly able to determine that that car was intentionally set on fire. Our bomb squad, the arson squad, the Baltimore City Fire Department, along with the Baltimore Police Department, were dispatched. We were also quickly able to learn that this person had essentially barricaded himself inside of the uh, Fox 45 uh, news station, so our SWAT team and our negotiators were also dispatched to the uh, scene. So all of this is going on around 1.20 uh, this afternoon. While officers were arriving, the Fox 45 staff were evacuating the uh, rest of their employees from the uh, facility. The security person who called it in is not an employee with Fox 45, but he was also able to escape after talking to the suspect for uh, several minutes as this situation was evolving. Apparently the suspect uh, brought in some type of device, we believe a flash drive, and wanted the, uh, Fox 45 to air something on the news. What is it that he wanted them to air is something that we're still investigating. We don't know the uh, full answers to that right now. The suspect had on some sort of outfit, and it's being described basically as a panda outfit onesie, a onesie type outfit uh, that was a panda. Uh, the suspect is a 25-year-old white male, uh, not from Baltimore. We believe he's from Howard County, Maryland. Um, again, we're still following up on this investigation as we speak. I'm not positively identifying him at this point because we have yet to uh, uh, charge the suspect. He's at a local hospital receiving treatment. Um, let me go back to the device that he had wrapped around him. He had on some type of surgical mask. He had uh, some type of coat on underneath of this outfit. And there was this red device uh, that is being described like maybe a red flotation type device with devices in it that look like explosives. What we've been able to find out is those devices were actually chocolate candy bars wrapped in aluminum foil with wiring uh, connecting each of them. There was also a small motherboard and that motherboard has been described as uh, something that you might see in a fire extinguisher that was also attached to this contraption. And the wire was also running down the sleeve of his uh, a jacket into his hand, uh, basically emulating some type of uh, detonation type device. So it does not appear that this was a device capable of actual explosives, but the appearance of it was to be an actual explosive type device. Um, the suspect was inside of the vestibule area. Our SWAT team, our police officers were all outside. We were attempting communication with the suspect. The suspect came out of the building, started to walk in advance across the street towards where officers were staged and officers were forced to fire upon him. We know at this point that three officers fired and struck the suspect. Uh, the suspect was shot. Uh, more than one time, believe maybe three times, that number can change. The suspect is listed in serious but stable condition at a local hospital here in Baltimore. Uh, why did this happen? Why did he wear a replica bomb today? We don't know. Uh, we're still investigating this. 
Uh, they used a robot to disarm him, to take though the, the, the clothing off of him, to take the device off of him in order to move in to provide treatment to him. Once they were able to do that, they were able to closely examine the device and see what it actually was. We're still in the process of clearing the Fox 45 building. Uh, we were able to account for everyone, but of course public safety is the most important thing at this point in time. Uh, so as it stands, that's where we are. Uh, the suspect is expected to survive and uh, we'll be working with our state's attorney's office as well as our uh, federal partners as we move through with charging. This is going to take more than the time that I'm standing here and it's going to take uh, uh, more than a couple of days to determine everything that went on here. And Did with that, with, about, with that, let's ask some questions. Do you know anything about this guy's history? I know you're not publicly identifying him, but do you know anything about his background? At this point, we do not have any information on his background. Did he say anything as he was being taken into custody? I know there was some hesitation about what he was saying. Is there any communication with him that he was not complying initially? Yeah, we were trying to get him to comply and to show us his hands so that we could get treatment to him quickly. He actually was certainly, we have information that he was nodding his head no when officers were trying to get him to show him his hands. So, so I can't get into all of his statements, but I can tell you that he was saying no when we were asking him to comply. Was the timing from the car fire to when he walked into the building? It all happened relatively quickly. And, and I don't know if the folks at Fox 45 exactly knew everything that was going on at the time. This vehicle, we didn't know if that was associated with an event, but we now know that the vehicle was associated with it. Have you? Was there ever a point where police were on the phone with him, negotiating with him, trying to get him out of the building? I don't believe we were talking to him inside the building on the phone. I think we were using other devices. Was it his car? Yeah, we hadn't gotten there. We believe the vehicle was his. It, it, at least it's associated with him. What was on the flash drive? I'm sorry? What was on the flash drive? Um, something that he wanted the news people to air. Um, I don't know what the content of it was. I don't know what it was, but something that he wanted them to air. TJ, what's his condition right now? His condition right now is serious but stable. He's expected to survive. Was he unconscious after he was shot and that's why the robot had to move in? Or was he no, the, 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 the scene wasn't secure. Understand, um, I'm telling you what the device is after the fact. When the robot was moving in, the, no one knew what the device was. Um, as you see, we're right here just a block away from the venue, uh, the, from Fox 45, and we're next to residential homes. The suspect came out of the business, um, out of the facility, and that's where he was shot. Um, when the officers moved in with the robot, they removed his clothes out of safety. After he was shot, yes. was he conscious or was he not cooperating? For instance, was he not help, was he not Appears to have not, uh, he, uh, he's been described as conscious and alert. And uh, it just appears to be uncooperative. I mean, you just have to think about the person that takes the uh, strap up a device like this and walk into a television station. So um, there, there are a lot of questions that we have. Did he say anything when he left the building? Did he say anything to officers across the street? Or did he leave anything in the building as a problem? We're certainly searching the building right now to make sure when we return the Fox 45 employees there that are safe. And uh, we don't have uh, any statements that were made by the suspect. How far did he get inside the building? How deep inside the building did he get? We're investigating that right now. Again, that's going to be part of a uh, uh, extensive search to ensure that there aren't any other type of secondary devices. Again, the device that he had, we uh, are able to say that that device is not uh, an actual device. So we're still uh, right now investigating it. And that's part of it. Before we put Fox 45, you guys back in that building, we're going to make sure it, it's nothing else in there. Because we don't know, was he there earlier today? Was he there earlier in the week? We don't know this, but that'll be part of our investigation. Yeah, they were candy bars. Right. Do, what type of candy bars? I, I mean, we chocolate. haven't decided. They, yeah, chocolate, yeah, chocolate candy bars. Do you know about the car? What kind of car it was? What kind of damage it sustained? No, um, I can't. I don't know the answer to that. Can you say where he was shot? Where was he shot? Less than lethal rounds? No, he was shot with... He was shot with a rifle. He was shot with a gun. Yeah, there was no, there was not, no attempt for it to be a less than lethal shot. He was... Uh, the, okay, um, Leland, let me um, explain to you again. The suspect, as we know, is walking out of the building after threatening a staff at Fox 45 with some type of outfit that appeared to be a bomb. Hindsight now being 2020, we know that there were candy bars in that bomb uh, and, and that, that device, that replica outfit that he had on. 
When he walked out on the street, he posed a threat to this community, a threat to the officers, and they were forced to use uh, uh, their real guns to shoot the suspect. Uh, the suspect has survived those uh, injuries, um, but again, time is on our side, but when you have a non-compliant individual, you have to unfortunately do what you have to do. The security guard says he talked for 45 minutes while he waited for people to get out of the building, that he kept talking to this guy, he kept him calm, he kept stalling him. I've got to ask you, Commissioner, I've got to ask you guys, what do you have to say about this guy who managed to keep this guy talking and not take any further action? Well, I'm not sure we're in a position right now to, to kind of retrospectively right now look back at, at that interaction and, and offer a comment on that. This is, thankfully, a very, very unusual event. But in this day and age, uh, these events seem to happen more and more across our country. They seem to happen more and more at places like news stations and police stations and government facilities and schools. So, um, you know, it's become all too common in America for us to gather like this to examine the bizarre, dangerous behavior of a, a singular individual. Uh, and I don't necessarily have a, a rational, a rational rather, explanation for irrational behavior. But when we learn more about him, yeah, everybody did a great job. Everybody at Fox 5 did a great job. And I'm sure your news organizations are equally prepared to deal with something unusual. Um, and listen, we've learned a lot as a country uh, to, to deal with these types of incidents. And, you know, we'll learn more about this, this man. Uh, as time goes forward, and, and unfortunately, we'll probably learn the, the same old, same old about him. And I can, I can predict it. How many times did police fire, and where was the suspect hit? Right. Several. And, I'm and not I, sure exactly where he's hit. I addressed the fact that three, that three, suspect, uh, three officers fired at the suspect, and that he was shot at least uh, three times. Um, he's in serious but stable condition at the hospital. Do we know if he got Jennifer. police officers? It was Baltimore police officers. Do we know for certain that he did not get beyond the vestibule? No, we, we, we don't know that for certain at this point in What's time. We'll, we'll certainly review security footage, and that'll be part of our, um, our, our investigation. I know people want to know if he's known, if it's somebody we've had contact with. That's part of our investigation. We know everyone wants to know the answer. I would encourage everyone to follow us at Baltimore Police on Twitter, follow us on Facebook. We'll provide an update there. Um, that'll be our next update, if any. It'll be um, a written update. We don't plan on having any further media briefs. At this time, uh, the, the, the situation is being secured behind us at Fox 45, uh, so we can get them back into normal business, and, uh, and our investigation will continue. So, so that's going to be part of our investigation. I mean, again, it's 530. This happened at 1.30 in the afternoon. The most important thing right now is not what's on that flash drive. It's the safety of the citizens and the people in this area. That is the most important thing right now. So once we're able to say nothing's going to blow up down there and the folks at Fox 45 are going to be able to go back to work and nothing's going to happen to them, then we'll start trying to figure out what's on that flash drive. And our investigators, we have investigators at police headquarters at a secondary site away from here. Uh, we're working with our federal authorities right now. So we're certainly following up on him as we speak. But the most important thing right now, and I can't stress it enough, is public safety. We'll have a, another update later on in the evening potentially with written information and we'll invite the press potentially tomorrow for an additional update. TJ, Thank you guys very much. Evaluation. Thank you guys very much. Mental evaluation perhaps?